All right, we continue into Eternal Security, the Liberty Bible Course. This is part seven. I'm not going to go into no previews or any reviews or anything like that. Go back and get the videos and the, and the, and the audio and follow along. Get the books. We'll give you the address and the website that you can get these books. Do them yourselves. And send them to the, to them. No, no, grade it, and give you a certificate that you complete. They got many interesting studies. The, today, number seven, which looks like the last, in eternal security. What happens when you sin after you are saved? Don't let anybody fool you that your life is going to be wonderful after salvation and you're perfect. You've been perfected, 100%. That's a lie. As you turn to 1 John 2, 1, we look at what we have done as far as the chapter outlines is, why is salvation necessary? That was part one. Part two, what is salvation? Part three, who gives salvation? Part 4, what is the basis of salvation? 5, how do you obtain salvation? 6, how long does salvation last? And now, 7, now that you're saved, and you're going off, you're going along life, and boom, that thought came in your head, that word came out of your mouth, that whatever. I haven't given up that yet. Am I lost? Did I lose it? First John 2 1 says, My little children, you're young in the Lord if you just got saved. If you're very freshly, if you've just been born again, the Bible calls you a babe. And don't be afraid of that. Don't be put down by that you're being born you're born again you you started over you got a second chance in life my little children is you've grown up in the Lord and maybe you still wonder maybe you're not getting the diet I can understand that but my little children these things right eye unto you that ye sin not now, I'm glad there's more pages. I'm not going to leave you with this, that, cut off the video and call off the audio and say, boom. And you said, no, because then you're going to go a long life tomorrow. That guy's going to cut you off and the middle finger is going to go up. Oh, oh, oh I sinned. <laughs> he read to me, sin not. I got angry with my boss. I, uh, what have you? It is God's will that we do not sin. Oh, I don't understand what the will of God is in my life. God does not want you to sin. That's a will. There are many wills of God. He wants us to be righteous and holy. That's without sin. That's without wrong. This is why we need to be studying His Word in the Bible. It's why you need to read your Bible. This is why you need to pray. This is why you need to confess your sin. Psalms 119.11 You're going to be a sinner until the day you drop dead. Or the rapture happens. A man that is lying in a casket will not ever sin again. And let me remind you, as you turn to Psalms 119.11, do you know that there was a time in your life, if you are a born-again Christian, that you were without sin? The day, the hour that you got saved, the time you asked Christ to save you and to wash your sins away in His blood, at that moment you were sinless and perfected. Now that time period changed according to who you are some people could have been longer some could have been shorter I've known of people <coughs> excuse me 
who got saved and every word other word in, in the prayer was a cuss word did they get saved that's between them and the Lord I probably there are people out there who probably got saved and then went to sleep and maybe the whole night long there was no sin It may have been a minute, it may have been a night long, it could have been ever how long until that next sin came in your life. But there's one guaranteed thing is that perfection, that sinless that you had in your life after Christ saved you at that moment when you were completely washed away in your sins. Had you died, you would go to the judgment seat of Christ without no loss, but you would never have a crown. What are you talking about? If I was complete perfection, if I was completely sinless, I would have to get a crown. No. Because you had not had life, you had not had enough time to live in life to earn anything. Only thing you would have gotten right there was not going to hell. And that's why God leaves us here. That we can have the opportunity. Listen, it's been wonderful the day I got saved in uh, April 1987, the 21st. If that moment I asked Christ to save me, he would call me home to heaven. But I would never. I would have never had any crowns. I would not have the opportunity to speak to you today and help you through the Bible. I'm getting crowns. But the day I got saved, I would not have one crown. You are here after being saved to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to the lost. You are here to guide and train up other Christians. Those that you bring to Christ, you are to bring them up in admiration of Jesus Christ. And that was a little bit of a bunny trail, but it was necessary. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I should confess the sin of lying. But maybe it was. Maybe somebody needed that. Because we're saved now. What happens after salvation? I just told you. Now, you were sinless. You were perfected at that moment. You get up and I've sinned. And you just read to me that I am not to sin and God's will for me is not to sin. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know what you're supposed to do as a Christian? You're supposed to read the word. That verse right there is not mentioned as far as words, but that word is to tell you you're to memorize. Now, I've been four or five years in prison ministry. Let me add that. I've taught and preached the Bible. I've always told people this. I'm going to tell you, and you probably won't, you probably heard it before, and you're going to hear it again. What's, as a matter of fact, I saw it today. Well, somebody said, what would, be the, what would be Bible verses that I should memorize? I'm going to give you two things. Get good King James gospel tracts. And look at the verses they use and memorize those. I'm going to tell you number two. Find the, read your Bible, find the sins that are in your Bible, and know those verses that admire you. I don't have to know verses about drinking alcohol. That doesn't affect me. But there are sins in my life that I can go back in the Bible and I know people's names or I know where it is. That, that's my sin. And when you start memorizing scripture that is referenced to you and your sin, you watch the Holy Spirit work in your life with that sin. You got a problem with drinking? There's plenty of verses in there about drinking. You got a problem with smoking? Why don't you go over to Ezekiel 28 when it speaks about Satan as you imitate Satan? And think about that. Every time you light up, you are an ambassador of Satan. You look like Satan. In verse 9 of 119, where wherewithal. Shall a young man, gee, that matches 1 John 2, 1, cleanse his way. You say, wait a minute. It said, child, give it. 
Aren't you grown? Aren't you growing? You're supposed to be growing. What happened between children and man here in this study? You have hid the word in your heart. You know, there are, uh, listen, I know there's birth defects and all that. I, I, not talking about that. There are Christians out there, speaking only to Christians, that are retarded. And they're not retarded by birth. They're retarded, retarded because they want to be, by choice. They don't want to grow. They don't want to pray. They don't want to get in the Word. Oh, but when they have problems, they want to go run to their pastor and have the pastor give them all the answers. Or Christian counseling and other junk. With all shall a young man cleanse his way. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You are to read the word. You are to memorize the word. And you are to do the word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. James says. John 17, 14 through 17. We're talking about sinning. After you're saved. I think you see what the main focus here. The word. What is not the main focus of Christianity? The word. Why is there failure? Lack of the word. You may not even be in the word. Oh, I read my Bible. In order to do these lessons here, you need a King James Bible. If you ain't got a King James Bible, all your answers are wrong. I have given them thy word, Jesus speaks. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I, Jesus, am not of the world. Some of you expect me to go on, but I'm not. I'm refraining myself. Believe me. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. Look at that. Jesus prayed that you, Christian, that God would not take you out of the world. John 17. How's that? But that thou shouldst keep them from evil. They are not of the world. Boy, a lot of them act like it. Even as I, Jesus, am not of the world. Sanctified means to be set apart. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. You gotta have the true word. Modern Bibles that are not the King James Bible is not the word of truth. That may be problem number one, two, three, and five. But the problem above one is some of you are not even in the word. You know, I've been in churches where a pastor gets up, read, read from a King James Bible, and no one, in the, in the few people in the congregation. Have a Bible open. And when the pastor says, well, go over here, they don't. They may open the Bible at the beginning when the pastor reads, but they don't follow along the rest of the message. And then they throw the Bible in the back seat of the car, and it sits there to the next church service. I know what I'm talking about. 1 Peter 1 15 and 16 God says but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for I am holy God said that talking to you not a lost man talking to you a born-again Christian 
God left his word for us to leave it on the coffee table and gather dust. No. God left his word for us to read. But oh, it's not. Not only to learn how to be saved. Listen, the Bible's not just because, oh, okay, I'm saved, now I can close it forever. But also that to know how we ought to live. You know what that word live is? You know you can pronounce that word two ways. It's either live or live. What's live mean? means right now going. You are to be living a live life. Well, that's a tongue twister. According to the word of God. You ought to be living a life. That's a tongue twister. The Bible says. All scripture. Genesis to Revelation. That's all scripture. Is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. And it's profitable. You know what profitable is. For uh, yeah, for doctrine. The teaching. For reproof. Oh, for correction. A lot of you don't like that. That's not being taught. That's not being preached in churches today. For instruction in righteousness. The word of God is for you to learn how to be righteous. Oh, what am I supposed to care about a man named David? A man named David committed two sins that his entire life was destroyed. You ought to learn from that. And then one day he got into a big serious battle that was over his head and God gave him the victory. That the man of God may be perfect. Now that doesn't mean 100%. That means your motive, your conduct is what God wants you to be presently in your life. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And that's 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. And the problem with many of you is you won't open your Bible and read it. And you're not going to go any further because you, you're not going to open and read it. By the time you get to number seven, Numbers chapter 7, you're going to bomb out. And then when you, if you do make it and you get to Chronicles 1, 2, and 3, you're going to bomb out. Why? Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, Christian. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is good. Christians don't do that today. And acceptable. I like it. No. What is acceptable in God. Not you. And perfect. Oh, look at that word again. Will of God. So God's will is that you don't sin. And God's will is that you renew your mind to prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. That will of God is not being practiced in the churches today. It is not being practiced amongst Christians. God wants us to live right. And the instruction to do so is in his holy word, the Bible, King James. Make sure that you read it every day. Now, what does it mean to be perfect? 1 John 1 8. I gave you a brief definition, but we're going to look at it through the scripture. You know, a perfect game, you say something like a pitcher in a, in a ball game, he can have one game where he strikes everybody out. But then when he goes to the next game, 
everybody hits a home run. Well, he had a perfect game. But then I guess you would say he sinned the next game. 1 John 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, and there's a religion out there that says they don't sin, you just sin. You lied. We Christians deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. What is the truth? We are sinners. Yes, even being born again, saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, our flesh, our body sins. We are still sinners. Don't get in that religion that teaches you know, your holiness and all that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to mention no names. You know, with you know the, the collars go all the way down here, and the dress goes all the way down, and, and you know we don't. Yeah, blah blah blah. We can pitch a pipe at somewhere else if you like to. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse twenty. For there is not a just man upon the earth. Quit looking at yourself in the mirror. You're not it. Quit looking at your mama. Quit looking at your children. Quit looking at your grandma. They ain't it. You know, if you ever want to find out how much how much of a sinner you are, <clears throat> get married and and live with that person for about. 24 hours <laughs> and then ask them they don't need to take 24 hours listen if I really want you know what I do here's a secret if I really want to know about a pastor I watch his children then I look at his wife okay That do it good. Oh, I'm good. No. No, you're not. You know, I like to say every single time I don't, but I like to say every time I hear someone say, I'm doing good. Oh, it's, uh, there's none do it good. There's none righteous. No, not one. I do quote that verse to some people. Hmm? Sometimes I say it myself. But there is none that do it good. What is good? Doing the will of God. Now tell me, are you 100% doing the will of God? Tell me you don't even know what the will of God is. Well, you just told me no, there's more. <laughs> and sinneth not. We're all sinners. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, they didn't get naked. They didn't get in a bed. There was no flesh. But Jesus said, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Just thinking about is adultery. You know, Joab's brother was accused of murder. You know, uh, Jezebel's husband, the Ahab, or Ahaz, I can never get the two, was, was charged by God with murder, and those two men never killed anybody in, in murder. But they thought about it. They wanted to. Jezebel's husband allowed her to do it. Some of you I, I'm preaching to, you haven't the, the foggiest idea what I'm doing. You need to call me as a pastor in your area, and I'll get teaching the Word of God. I'll give you some meat. Well, I'll have to start with breast milk. And then go with milk, and then the rice cereal, because you're not getting this and where, where you're sitting. Your pastor's not doing his job. And he probably, he's probably got the Dunlap disease. His belly's Dunlapped over the belt while your ribs are showing. Christians are not perfect. You know, when you're first saved, you think that all the Christians are perfect. Give it a while, and you'll see they're not. 
They're just forgiven. We still sin. But the more we grow in our Christian lives in the Word of God, the less we should be sinning. Why do I keep sinning? Do you, are you in the Word? No. Well, there you go. That television guidance thing is not going to get you. The reading of the digest is not going to get you holy. Play pen and all those others are not going to get you definitely. How about this for a Christian? I love this. And they even got Christian ones. Stalin, you're going off. No, I'm not going off the track. I'm staying with the track. Talk about the Bible. I'm going to say Christian, and this, this goes for all the books at the, at the library. Fiction. What's fiction? A lie. If you're going to read a lie book called fiction, that ain't going to get you. Well, has Chris, no, listen. No. I'm not going to buy that. You get on with our Christmas study and all that, and you'll see what it's like. Called marrying in garbage. But what happens when we do sin? Let's look at 1 John 2, 1 and 2. If you're a newborn babe in Christ, let me tell you something, please. Don't start with Genesis. Yeah, No, don't. Find the Gospel of John. You may not be able to find it. And I don't expect you to. There are Christians out there, I'm not talking to them, but I'm talking to them right now. There are Christians out there have been saved 30, 40 years and couldn't even find Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But they can name all the players on the ball game. But if you're a newborn baby in Christ, find the Gospel of John, read that. And pray over it. Next, first and second Thessalonians. Read that. Then first John is we're here. Do not do not go to the book of Acts. Do not go to Matthew. Do not go to Hebrews. And do not go to the book of Revelation. Those books, we, those are meat. They are not for a newborn Christian or a retard Christian. I read the book of Revelation when I was first saved. I almost got messed up. I'm going to tell you the truth. You don't have to read the book of Revelation. You know I was praying for the devil to get saved. I read it. I saw where Satan was going. I would talk to the Satan and say, why don't you just get saved? You know, after that, I, I put the Bible down for a long time. Then I went out and stole the Bible. Good news. Bad news. You need a King James. Listen to me. I'm growing the Lord. I've been saved since 1987. The Lord has called me to ministry. The Lord has given me a file cabinet of life for preaching the gospel. Please adhere to what I'm telling you. I love you. I want you to grow. So 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. That's what we went through. Oh, Brother Stolly, I did. I sinned. I can't put that cigarette down. I looked at that woman. I... I I didn't want to, but I cussed. I'm upset. Did I lose it? And if a man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, capital F. Who is that advocate? Jesus Christ, the righteous. So when you do sin after being saved, you can go to the Father, the judge, with a lawyer.
you read First John 3, I believe it's 1 or 2. Now watch. Watch what your lawyer does for you. And he is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Those are for people who need to be saved. We're looking at those who are saved. Looking at you are saved and you sin. And you, you come to that point, you sin, and you come to Jesus Christ. You don't go to a priest. You don't just wash it off and water it down. You don't do nothing with it. I mean, don't do nothing. I mean, just don't sin and just go carry on. You are to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ as your advocate. That is a lawyer. Someone who represents you before a judge. God the judge. And when we get saved, Jesus is no longer our judge. He becomes our defense. Our lawyer in court of heaven. And what does he do about our sin? God cannot allow sin in heaven. Can't. God is holy. Be ye holy. But brother, I've, I've done this sin. That means I can't go to heaven. It's not what I'm teaching. Knows carefully what the verse says. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He does not excuse our sin. Oh, little boy, I'm so sorry. Go, go get yourself a, a, a dish of ice cream and don't worry. I'll talk to your father when he gets home. No. He forgives it based upon his own righteousness sacrificed on the cross for our sins. It's all by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And in verse 2, our propitiation of our sins, the word means satis satisfaction. His death on the cross totally satisfied the payment of our sins. The sins before we were saved, the sins after we are saved, are all forgiven on the basis of Jesus' one sacrifice, i got to say that, for all of us on the cross. First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 So that sin, that, 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 that sacrifice on the cross that saved you, that blood that flowed that you got saved still flows and still is available in your life. You don't get born, born again or reborn again. No. You're born again and then when your life, when you sin, you can call upon that blood that saved you to wash you and to cleanse you. There is no need to be reborn. Reborn, and reborn, and reborn, and reborn. No. You need to be born again to be saved. And you need to ask Christ to wash your sins away when you sin after you're saved. Don't let them tally up. For 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he has made him to be sin for us, Jesus, who knew no sin. Christ was sinless, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know how you become righteous? Through Christ. Christ will make you righteous. Christ will make you holy. You know, if you were right now, you're, let's say you've been saved 5, 7, 20,000 years. And you ask God, say, God, what is in my life right now that is unpleasing, that's a sin that I need to confess? 
and you there on your knees or wherever sitting down wherever you are and God reveals all those sins and you sincerely repent and put them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and if you were to die that moment or if the rapture would happen you would be completely sinless your righteousness would be that the blood has covered all your sins you know that there is a time in your life again you can be sinless and yet be a sinner. Not of your own merit, but what Christ has done for you. You can ask God to wash all your sins away, drop dead at that moment, and then you'll be sinless. You got to mean it, though. I mean, if you're in a hospital room and they know you got hours left, no, oh Lord, forgive me, just you know, you boom, 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 boom. And no, listen, you got to be sincere. How righteous is the righteousness of God? Why, that's perfect. For Christ was no sin. He was a, he was a sinless lamb. He was without blemish. He was without spot. He was the perfect one. For Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So believing and trusting and washing your sins in the righteousness of God, that makes you perfect. Now, if you survive and you live another hour, you may be a sinner again. I'm told, but I don't know. But if you clean up a pig, you set that pig down. Once he finds that mud hole, he's gone. I know when we take our dog, we, we give her a bath. You put her down the ground. Man, she's going to find the next thing she can go rolling. And that's us. You can attain sinless perfection. But in the sinful nature that we are in, in this flesh and bodies we are, you can't keep it. And then you got to have all your sins confessed. You, that takes a lot of time. And you can't just say one of these one, two, three prayers. Oh, God, forgive me for all my sins and Jesus. No, no, that don't work. So in Jesus Christ, we have the righteousness of God. We can be righteous. Because Jesus is totally righteous. And he is God. And God is him. And he willingly paid the price for our sins. Now let's think. Are you truly trusting in Jesus' shed blood as a payment for your sins? It's not membership. It's not H2O. It's not who you are or what you are. It's not even the religion or the membership in the church. It's not that at all. It must be the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If you are, then your salvation totally depends upon him and not you. That is why a true salvation can never be lost. It's not yours to lose. And if you are truly believing in faith that you are trusting Jesus shed blood to wash your sins away, and you say that you can lose it, you are saying that Jesus Christ and God can lose things. Imagine God one morning get, oh, where did Saturn go? Where did that little sparrow go? All the angels gather over here. I uh, lost the sparrow. Where did he go? Michael, Gabriel, come here. I lost Sally's salvation. Will you help me find me? Go underneath. I don't. Somebody go check Lucifer's hand. See if he took it. No. How can a righteous and holy God forget anything? I do. Thank God God gave me a neck. I leave my head in the pillow in the morning if I wasn't attached. If you are saying that you can lose it, you're trusting in a man somewhere. Because only man can lose things.
So, I got surety of salvation. But can, uh, can I do anything I want? No. For Hebrews 12, 5, and 6. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorneth every son whom he receives. If you sin, God's going to come after you and discipline you. And nothing you do escapes the eyes of the Lord. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil first and the good. Evil first. That's what we're prone to do. God disciplines his children in all sorts of ways, as you will see in the following scriptures. 1 Corinthians 11.30 and 32, as far as the Lord's Supper. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That's death in the Bible. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. God can make disobedient Christians sick to get attention. To get God's attention, he may cause sickness in your life. God may chastise you with weakness. He may even give you death. That's a great awakening. Read the book of Job. Clearly God does sometimes use sickness as a means of discipline and gets his people's attention. Notice that this passage also teaches that if a Christian does not listen to God trying to correct him or her, then God may allow him to die early and many sleep. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. First John, again, 5, 16, 17. God does not always kill people for their sin, but sometimes he will do it if you will not listen to him. Read Acts 5, 11, 1 through 11 on your own. It said back in 1 Corinthians 11, 30 and 32. You turn there, I'd like you to. Again. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For we would judge ourselves. You say, what is that? That we should not be judged. That is confessing your sins after you're saved. If you don't confess your sins, we, we should not be judged. God will just judge you. God will chasten you. And if you were to die, those, those sins that are not under the blood, 1 John 1, 9, are, will show up at the judgment seat of Christ. And you will suffer loss. Judging yourselves means, I am a sinner. God, help me. Show me my sins so I can put them under the blood. That I can be righteousness by Jesus Christ. I can be perfect by the blood of the shed lamb that cleansed me, that washed me, that made me saved. That I am a sinner after, my, after I'm saved. I have done wrong. I need to be clean, Lord. I am judging myself, Lord. That you will not chastise me. That not only not chastise me, but Lord, I can be holy. I can be a clean vessel. In Romans 14, 12, So in every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. What do you do after, you, after you're saved and you sin? You need to confess it, 1 John 1, 9, and put it under the blood. Can you lose your salvation? 
it's not yours to be lost. If you think you can lose it, you're putting your faith in a man who which can lose things. I hope these studies have been a blessing to you. Again, the Liberty Bible course, I'll, I'll give the, the thing for it. Send for them. they got great courses. As we conclude this time, write me, contact me. You need any help or any instruction, I'll be happy to help you any way I can, in what ways I can that God will show me. I don't have all the answers. I don't have it all. But I can do, I can look up. For those that are seriously wanting to do right, maybe you just want me to pray for you. Just send me an email, send me Facebook, whatever. I'll put you on my prayer list. No money needed. I won't send you no hankies or anything like that. I'm here not for a profit, but I'm here to be a help and be a vessel used for God. God will take care of me. May God bless you. May you take these. And may most of all, as I close in this last final word, get in the word of God and stay in it. No!